of our Lord Sri Aurobindo. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, Do not allow yourself to be troubled or discouraged by any difficulties, but quietly and simply open yourself to the mother's force and allow it to change you. With always our love and blessings, says our Lord Sri Aurobindo. Beginnings, Canto 4, The Secret Knowledge, page 75. At last, he wakes to a memory of self. He sees within the face of deity, the Godhead breaks out through the human mind. Her highest heights she unmasks and is his maid. Till then he is a plaything in her game, her seeming regent, yet her fancy's toy, a living robot moved by her energy's springs. He acts as in the moments of a dream, an automation stepping in the grooves of fate. He stumbles on driven by her whip of force. His thought labors, a bullock in time's fields. His will he thinks his own is shaped in her forge. Obedient to world's nature's dumb control, driven by his own formidable power, his chosen partner in a titan game, her will he has made the master of his fate, her whim the dispenser of his pleasure and pain. He has sold himself into her regal power for any blow or boon that she may choose. Even in what is suffering to our sense, he feels the sweetness, other mastering touch. In all experience, meets her blissful hands. On his heart he bears the happiness of her tread and the surprise of her arrival's joy in each event and every moment's chance. <laughs> of our Lord Sri Aurobindo, taken from the collective works of our Lord Sri Aurobindo SABCL, book The Supramental Manifestation, topic Thoughts and Glimpses, Aporisms, subtopic The Goal. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, when we have passed beyond knowings, then we shall have knowledge. Reason was the helper. Reason is the bar. When we have passed beyond willings, then we shall have power. Effort was the helper. 
effort is the power when we passed beyond enjoyings then we shall have bliss desire was the helper desire is the bar when we have passed beyond individualizing then we shall be real persons ego was the helper ego is the bar when we have passed beyond humanity then we shall be the man the animal was the helper the animal is the bar in conscience most hard and rigid and narrow and stifling i struck upon an almighty spring that cast me up a fourth wheel into a formless limitless of us vibrating with the seeds of a new world. Alad Shri Aurobindo says, Transform reason into ordered intuition. Let all thyself be lied. This is thy goal. Transform effort into an even and sovereign overflowing of the soul's strength. Let all thyself be conscious force. This is thy goal. Transform enjoying into an even and objectless ecstasy. Let all thyself be bliss. This is thy goal. Transform the divided individual into the world personality. Let all thyself be the divine. This is thy goal. Transform the animal into the driver of the herds. Let all thyself be Krishna. This is thy goal. A large share of Indusis, what I cannot do now is the sign of what I shall do hereafter. The sense of impossibility is the beginning of all possibilities. Because this temporal universe was a paradox, and an impossibility therefore the eternal created it out of his being impossibility is only a sum of greater unrealized possibilities it wields an advanced stage and yet and yet unaccomplished journey If thoughts have humanity advance buffet all preconceived ideas thought thus smitten awakes and becomes creative otherwise it rests in a mechanical repetition and mistakes that for its right activity Alad Shri Aurobindo says to rotate on its own axis is not the one moment for the human soul there is also its wheeling around the sun of an inexhaustible illumination be conscious first of thyself within then think and act all living thought is a world in preparation all real act is a thought manifested the material world exists because an idea began to play in divine self consciousness thought is not essential to existence nor its cause but it is an instrument for becoming i become what i see in myself all that thought suggests to me i can do all that thought reveals in me i can become 
This should be man's unshakable faith in himself because God dwells in him. And Lord Sri Aurobindo says not to go on forever repeating what man has already done is our work but to arrive at new realization undreamed of masteries. Time and soul and world are given us for our field, vision and hope and creative imagination stand for our prompters, will and thought and labor are our all effective instruments. A large Shirobindo says, what is there new that we have yet to accomplish? Love for as yet we have only accomplished hatred and self-pleasing. Knowledge for as yet we have only accomplished error and perception and conceiving. Bliss for as yet we have only accomplished pleasure, pain and indifference. Power for as yet we have only accomplished weakness and effort and a defeated victory. Life for as yet we have only accomplished birth and growth and dying. Unity for as yet we have only accomplished war and association. In a word, Godhead to remake ourselves in the divine image, says our Lord Sri Aurobindo. Words of our Divine Mother taken from the collective works of our Divine Mother, Volume 2, page 25, topic Bringing Order in the Mind. Our Divine Mother says the method will always be the same to reflect and reflect and reflect. We must take these ideas one after another and analyze them by appealing to all our common sense, all our reason, our highest sense of equity. We must weigh them in the balance of our acquired knowledge and accumulated experience and then endeavor to reconcile them with one another to establish harmony among them. It will often prove very difficult for we have a regrettable tendency to let the most contrary or contradictory ideas dwell side by side in our minds. Our Divine Mother says we must put all of them in one place bring order into our inner chamber and we must do this each day just as we tidy the rooms of our house. For I suppose that our mentality deserves at least as much care as our house. But once again, for this work to be truly effective, we must strive to maintain in ourselves our highest quietest, most sincere state of mind so as to make it our own. Let us be transparent so that the light within us may fully illumine the thoughts we want to observe, analyze, classify. Let us be impartial and courageous so as to rise above our own little preferences and petty personal conveniences. Let us look at the thoughts in themselves, for themselves without bias. And little by little, if we persevere in our work of classification, we shall see order and light take up their abode in our minds. But we should never forget that this order is but confusion compared with the order that we must realize in the future, that this light is but darkness compared with the light that we shall be able to receive after some time. A Divine Mother says life is in perpetual evolution. If we want to have a living mentality, we must progress unceasingly. Moreover, this is only a preliminary work. 
we are still very far very far from the true thought which brings us into realization with the infinite source of knowledge these are only exercises for training ourselves gradually to an individualizing control of our thoughts for control of the mental activity is indispensable to one who wants to meditate says our divine mother the road to the divine always long often dry in appearance but always abundant in its results says our divine mother our divine mother says thy voice is heard as a melodious chant in the stillness of my heart and is translated in my head by words which are inadequate and yet replete with thee and these words are addressed to the earth and say to her poor sorrowful earth remember that i am present in thee lose not hope each effort each grief each joy each pang each call of thy heart each aspiration of thy soul each renewal of thy seasons all all without exception what seems to thee sorrowful and what seems to thee joyous what seems to thee ugly and what seems to thee beautiful all infallibly leads thee towards me who am endless peace shadowless light perfect harmony certitude rest and supreme blessedness hearken o earth to the sublime voice that arises hearken and take new courage next sub topic taken from the collective works of our divine mother volume 3 topic becoming conscious the first thing necessary Question sweet mother what is one to do to prepare oneself for integral yoga for this our divine mother says to be conscious first of all we are conscious of only an insignificant portion of our being for the most part we are unconscious it is this unconsciousness that keeps us down to our unregenerate nature and prevents change and transformation in it It is through unconsciousness that the undivine forces enters into us and makes us their slaves. You are to be conscious of yourself. You must awake to your nature and moments. You must know why and how you do things or feel or think them. You must understand that your motives and impulses, the forces hidden and apparent that move you, in fact, you must as it were take to pieces the entire machinery of your being once you are conscious it means that you can distinguish and shift things you can see which are the forces that pull you down and which help you and when you know the right from the wrong the true from the false the divine from the undivine you are to act strictly up to your knowledge that is to say resolutely reject one and accept the other the duality will present itself at every step and at every step you will have to make your choice you will have to be patient persistent and vigilant sleepless as the adept say you must always refuse to give any chance whatever to the undivine against the divine says our divine mother